Bernie Sanders sat down for an interview with Crystal Ball of The Hill TV, and he explained why he recently paid a visit to Kentucky, and it is to put pressure on Mitch McConnell. Now, he also gave us a little bit more insight into what he would do to pressure McConnell, assuming he remains the Senate Majority Leader, if Bernie Sanders is elected president. Take a look. Why did you want to come to Kentucky? For a very simple reason. I happen to believe in democracy. I happen to be a member of the United States Senate. And there are enormous challenges facing this country and the world. And I'm here in Kentucky because Mitch McConnell, the senator from Kentucky, happens to be the majority leader of the United States Senate. Now, McConnell can vote any way he wants on an issue. But what I find really outrageous and extremely undemocratic is his obstructionism and his refusal to allow major legislation to come to the floor for a debate and for a vote. So essentially, while enormous problems face this country, everybody knows it, there's very little that's going on in the Senate. It is a do-nothing body, and that is because of McConnell. And I came here to Kentucky to ask the people of this state to demand that their United States Senate allow real debate on the floor so that we can begin doing something to represent working families. So he proudly calls himself the Grim Reaper because he kills any and all democratic legislation that comes to the floor. He also recently wrote an op-ed saying that we should keep the filibuster in place. Um, what's your view on the filibuster? Well, let me talk about the Grim Reaper. I mean, and all that he is talking about is that we are seeing some decent legislation, not as strong as I would like, but some decent legislation coming from the House uh, in terms of raising the minimum wage to a living wage. That would be a profound, have a profound impact on the state of Kentucky, which, as you know, is a poor state, a lot of low-wage workers in this state. And that you have a senator from Kentucky who is refusing to bring a bill passed in the House to the floor is really an insult to the working people of Kentucky. And that's true for gun safety legislation. It's true for legislation trying to protect the integrity uh, of our elections from interference from Russia and other countries. Uh, in terms of the filibuster, I believe we need a strong filibuster reform. I don't think that some staff member can send down a message, uh, a note that says we're going to be required to have 60 votes. If you want to have a 60 vote margin, you want to filibuster, get on the floor and talk. I did it for eight and a half hours some years ago. That's what you can do. So I don't believe the Senate should be the House, but I do believe in strong uh, filibuster reform and also, I think, on major, major issues like Medicare for All, which I intend to get passed if elected president, uh, we can do budget reconciliation and other uh, provisions, other ways to get that through with a majority vote. To me, I think this is one of the most important questions for you and for other presidential contenders. If Mitch McConnell is still in charge of the Senate, how do you get your agenda passed? Well, I'll tell you how. Uh, you do what has historically always been done when real change takes place. And that is you do what I've done today, except coming back as president, we could do it with a little bit more force. And that is speak to the people state by state and have them understand what their senator is doing. In my view, the vast majority of the people in this state of Kentucky want to raise that minimum wage to $15 an hour. And if McConnell happens to be, and I hope he will not be, and I'll do everything I can to prevent that, but if he happens to be, to stay on as majority leader. I will be back in Kentucky to talk about the need to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, the need to guarantee health care to all people. And I think when you rally the American people, not just in Kentucky, all over this country, around an agenda that works for working people, you're going to be putting enormous pressure on those elected officials like McConnell who consistently represent the wealthy and the powerful against the interests of the people in their own states. So what Bernie Sanders is doing here is he's going above and beyond what other politicians are willing to do because they'll make these tweets about Mitch McConnell, they'll publicly denounce what he does, but nobody actually goes to Mitch McConnell's home turf and campaigns against him. Now, for those of you who don't know, Mitch McConnell is actually up for re-election in 2020. So currently, to go to his home state and make noise about why he's not representing his own constituents, that really is powerful. As Crystal Ball points out, Mitch McConnell is the self-proclaimed grim reaper of any and all progressive policies. But really, you know, it's not just progressive policies that he's killing. He's killing any and all policies. He won't allow a vote 
on pretty much anything. The House passes something, he won't even allow a vote on it, even if he knows that he has a majority. Republicans control the Senate, so they're most likely going to vote down whatever they don't like that is sent to them from the House, but he still just won't allow it. He is literally stopping democracy unilaterally. So Mitch McConnell is one of the biggest threats to democracy currently. He may be a bigger threat than Donald Trump, although that's arguable. But what Bernie Sanders is essentially doing is he's saying, look, Mitch McConnell is not going to continue to make a joke of our democracy. He's not going to be able to get away with blocking legislation and not allowing a vote. If he does this when I'm president, I will show up to Kentucky and campaign against him and have his own constituents call and put pressure on him. Now, it's not a sure bet that that strategy would work, but really, if you are the president of the United States, you are in control of that bully pulpit. You really could make a difference, potentially. Now, I really hope that Bernie Sanders extends this strategy to members of his own party. If he's elected president, you're going to have to put in time. It's not just Mitch McConnell who you're going to have to put pressure on. You're going to have to put pressure on the centrist, mealy-mouthed, spineless corporate Democrats who are going to fight you on issues like Medicare for All, student loan debt cancellation. Although Donald Trump did just use his pen to cancel student loans for um, disabled veterans. So hopefully Bernie Sanders would pursue that route as well. But for whatever you know policy Bernie cannot pursue via executive order, the strategy should be replicated. I mean, politicians should be doing this. If all progressives make noise in this way and put in that extra step to campaign in the home states of politicians, Mitch McConnell, Democrats and Republicans, if we do this, this really could be a huge national movement where we do see shift because if you don't get money out of politics, they are not going to budge. So, of course, the end result is to remove money from politics entirely. But until we get there, we are going to have to do things like this, you know, campaign in their home states. Now, one thing that Bernie Sanders said here, I do disagree with. He says that when it comes to the filibuster, he doesn't think that it should be eliminated. Now, I don't agree with that. I think that the filibuster is just, at this point, Republicans, they've nuked the filibuster. So we have no reason to arbitrarily impose rules on ourselves if we reclaim the Senate, we meaning Bernie Sanders and Democrats, when Republicans aren't willing to do that. So why should we impose rules on ourselves that Republicans don't impose on themselves? To me, that just feels like asymmetric warfare and it's just inherently unfair. Although, I do kind of give Bernie credit here and can give him a pass because even if he doesn't believe that the filibuster should be eliminated, he is open to filibuster reform and he did state that he would use something like budget reconciliation to pass policies like Medicare for All. If you expect to get Medicare for All while not getting rid of the filibuster, it's not going to happen. I mean, you're just not going to get 60 votes for something like Medicare for All. You'd be lucky to get 51 votes for Medicare for All, you know? So um, the fact that he is open to passing big policies in some way, be it budget reconciliation or filibuster reform, where he just needs that 50 plus one majority, that's good. Although I really would like to see him be bold here and just agree that we should be getting rid of of the filibuster full stop because Republicans are the ones who decided that, you know what, maybe the filibuster shouldn't exist now that we have power. So I see no reason for us to limit ourselves. But back to the overarching point about Mitch McConnell, Bernie Sanders here is showing everyone why he is a real leader. He's not just going to do politics as usual in the sense that he'll tell someone from the House or the Senate to propose legislation and then it'll be vote on and then either it passes or it fails, but that will be the end of the story. No, he's actually going to fight for what he's proposing, which you need because if you honestly expect to pass anything that is bold or a sweeping reform of whatever type, you're not going to get that done just by you know, the usual legislative procedure. That's just not going to happen in this day and age when we are incredibly polarized. You have to crack skulls. And Bernie Sanders thus far is the only politician that is communicating to me that he will be doing that, that he gets that. And that's important. And that's what really sets himself apart from people like Elizabeth Warren, who makes it very clear that she's a team player and, you know, she's on Team Democrat. And, you know, if they disagree well, that's fine. She's not going to push them too hard. No, I want an outsider who isn't part of a team 
who's going to say, you're going to follow my lead. And if not, then I'm going to campaign against you in your own home state. That's what we need. We have to be aggressive because we don't have a choice. The planet depends on it. The American people depend on us being aggressive and being relentless as we advocate for these policies that would substantially help people and change and save lives. So Bernie Sanders unquestionably has the right idea and we need him to be elected so that way he can implement this strategy and then other future presidents who are democratic will replicate this strategy because I have no doubt that this has a chance of being successful. I'm not going to say it's going to guarantee that Mitch McConnell will buckle, but at least when you put in that extra time and effort, it's more pressure than he would usually face, something that he's not necessarily used to. Because if you're shamed in your own home state, if people turn against you in your own home state, guess what? Your political career is done. And Bernie Sanders understands that, and that's why he understands the importance of taking it a step further and traveling the country, not just remaining in D.C. if he's president. That's why I support Bernie, because I want someone who's going to fight. And time and again, he has reassured me as a supporter that he will fight if he's elected.